Sean here with Think International Thinking Now for tomorrow. I'm joined by William Vanderblumen, speaker, consultant, and networker from Van Der Blumen Search Group, which is a organization specializing in connecting churches with key staff members. Also, Tony, Tony Morgan. What's up, Tony? Hello. Pastor of Ministries at West Ridge Church near Atlanta, who's a speaker, consultant, writer, strategist that helps people with strategic leadership and other strategy type things. Yes, that's correct. So you, did, what's up? you did a great job with that, by Thank the way. You. Yeah, I, I, I tried to add as many labels to my title as I could, and you, I think you covered all of them. There is tiers, where if you're at five, <laughs> you're good, but you know, seven, eight, and then there's master level at 11 That's to 13 fantastic. titles in your name. So anyway, so we are in Seattle, actually Bellevue. It's sunny outside though, so are you sure? Um, yeah, that's shocking, actually. I'm glad you guys brought the sun with you. I landed in L.A. and it was 45 and raining, and I'm like, did we land at the wrong airport? <laughs> right. Yeah, and so we're going to enjoy this for the next uh, few hours, and then we'll be back to rain for the next few months. So um, that's how it is here. Uh, but today, we're going to be talking about uh, your guys' specialties, and that is church leadership, staffing, elements of a successful team, um, warning signs when it comes to staffing, so stay tuned because this is going to be amazing. But first off, um, you guys, how do you guys flow together? I mean, you guys are connected in some way, you, you do your own thing, but you're also kind of connect. How does that work? We, we try and get separate hotel rooms <laughs> and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I, I, we, uh, I guess we met a couple years ago. I don't know. Well, you know I don't know if you remember, but I think we met over Twitter. Oh, really? You were headed to drive. Okay. Tweeted out there, is anybody out there? Oh. And I was going for an interview, and I was like, okay. yeah, you can hang yeah. with me, and, yeah. and there we were. Yeah, well, very good. So, yeah. uh, and uh, through conversations, both William and, I, William and I do share a passion for helping get the right people and the right seats in the bus and the whole thing, and so uh, he, he gets to do that full time. I get to do it part of my ministry at Westridge, and then uh, from time to time as I'm helping churches along the way, too, so... That we started partnering together officially, I guess it's been 18 months ago. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Love it. Yeah. Well, let's jump in. Um, first question, society has definitely changed in the way that people are interacting and connecting, mm -hmm. especially with internet, social, even physical uh, locations like Starbucks is third place, th those types of things. Um, what, how has that affected um, the way church leadership teams interact and the way staff uh, interacts? You seen differences in that area? Yeah, um, you know, I, we were talking uh, the other day, I guess it was on a, a webinar type of deal about how communications as a, as a church team grow, how that becomes more complicated. And, you know, when a church is small, folks that were there from the beginning get to sit at the table and actually are involved in making decisions and helping to move the ball down the field. But as a team grows, you can't invite everybody to the decision table, so you kind of get bogged down. Sure. And what I'm finding, too, as uh, with multi-site, as more churches embrace that, it's not only the number of people, but the different locations. I think it's stretching where teams are currently. Um, and you know, social media helps that. It's tough to replace the face-to-face -face conversations. And I would just say, really, right now, it's, I think it's a point of tension for churches to try to figure out how can we try to maintain communications, maintain trust. And I think it's, it's kind of a growing area for a lot of churches right yeah, now. I'd, I'd add that uh, I think you're beginning to see uh, the world flattening down in terms mm -hmm. of decision-making. You know, we, mm -hmm. we may have had a little bit more corporate structure, say, 20 years ago or so. Uh, now you've got kind of the world of open sourcing, or however sure. I say yeah. it, you know, yep. uh, and that applies to church stuff too. I mean, you got everything from the good of the pastor putting out there, send me your ideas for what I'm talking about this, and things come back real quick, to disgruntled staff person putting something out there that's not cool and the dreaded reply all button that happens every there now you and go. then. So yeah. I think there's both good and bad, but it's certainly moving faster. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Now, you guys get to work with some of the uh, kind of, you know, biggest but also most successful and even pioneering innovative churches that are out there. What are the key elements of successful teams and what are, you know, that make them successful in those settings? 
Boy, I think um, more than anything, the places that I see that are really thriving right now are places that are rebuilding a culture of honor. Uh, it's not like a dictatorial sort of listen to the boss thing, sure. but it's how can we honor our, our pastor? How do we protect the offices that are above and below us? Uh, so it's this whole honor and, and service thing where when the guy above is serving his staff and the, guy, the guys below are honoring their pastor, you just see a real synergy that's happening. Uh, a lot of that culture I see flowing out of the churches in Australia back up to us, Hillsong Church particularly. Sure. And uh, some of our clients that really kind of uh, push that, even preach messages on it to their churches, it just creates a whole different vibe of hospitality. Uh, there, there are probably a million things you could say to answer the question, but that's one that kind of jumps sure. to mind. The main yeah. And I would uh, add just uh, the uh, teams that have under understand the value of empowerment too, mm. which I think is it goes back to biblical principles. It's it's First Corinthians twelve. It's about the body of Christ and helping people identify what is how has God gifted you, what are your passions, uh, how can you use that to impact and influence other people, and and obviously carry out the mission that God has called us to. And so churches that I think combine that right perspective of honor and authority and yet recognize the power mm -hmm. of empowering people the way God has designed them, that's where you see great impact. I, I don't know if you'd agree with this or not, but I think uh, the pastors that I see that we get to work with that are the most effective are the ones who can be aware of all the details and let them go. Mm -hmm. Like we'll get hired quite often by a church that's grown, you know, the guy planted it and it's grown to two or 3,000 and now he can't do it all on his own. So he really needs to turn it over to either a directional leadership team or maybe a, a chief of staff or something like that, right? So uh, there are guys who just can't let go because they've poured their life into it. Sure. And I totally understand that. But the ones that really make the leap are the ones that can say, okay, even if it only gets done eighty percent the way I want it done, I'm going to live with that. And we're going to. Would you say that's? Yeah, wow. because ultimately that removes the lid because we only ha have so much bandwidth. So you're able to have more influence and more impact when mm -hmm. you're able to release. It's not a negligence, though. They're aware no. of what's going on. Sure. It's uh, yeah. It's good. Now, uh, for somebody watching any size church organization. Um, what are some things to watch for in staff interactions or warning signs that you could say, yeah, that's getting toxic, that's not going to turn out good the way that uh, these staff are, are working together and we should change that, move somebody? Hmm. Go ahead. I, I would say the, the principle that I've heard many people say I, I've felt like is just reinforced and right, and that is churches hire too quickly and they fire too slowly. Mm. And that's a hard word to say, but uh, I see people like, hey, man, my buddy called me, told me we need to go hire that guy. And so we just grab him and go. Mm. Uh, and undoing a hire is really painful. Sure. And so then the flip side of that is, you know that the person there is is uh, what my friend Sam Chan says, you know, you've got a cancer in the body but you just keep putting off surgery. Sure, there you go. <laughs> And if it were really a cancer really in your body, you would not say, I'll come back six months, let you deal with that. Right. So, I, you know, I don't want people to watch this and, you know, get to work the next day and their key's not working the door, but uh, <laughs> it, there's, there's a sense in which I'd, I'd rather see churches go slower with the hiring. Yeah. Um, and, and if there's a real problem, go ahead and address it quickly and see if it's repairable or if it's just truly a chemistry fit, yeah. Uh, That's good. Yeah. I don't know if I can add it. I mean, he's yeah. brilliant, isn't he? That was it. <laughs> <laughs> we should get out more. <laughs> now, you uh, you both do similar things. Your mm -hmm. uh, organization, Vanderbloom and Search Group, mm -hmm. connects churches with key staff, mm -hmm. kind of like a dating matchmaking service. Yeah, it's essentially, uh, so I've done 15 years of leading churches, right? Uh, pretty good size. The uh, Anywhere from being the lead pastor of a church 300 up to five, 6,000. So, uh, and then put that with some corporate training about how companies find their best staff people. So we tried to bring together, you know, some of what works in church and what we know doesn't work and then how we can take best practice from corporate sort of redeem them so we're not just treating the church like a business mm -hmm. but 
saying, you know, we really need to be careful with hiring. Bad hires are bad, but bad hires in church are really bad. Yeah. So a church will call us and say, we need a new fill in the blank. And uh, it's usually an upper level staff person, but not always. Yeah. Um, help a lot of churches with senior pastor searches, help a lot of churches with succession planning. Uh, even with younger pastors, like so you're a pastor and you're leading 5,000 and you're only 35 and then you get hit by a bus, what happens? So, sure. you know, there's uh, a wide variety of things, but the main piece is churches that need key staff sure. call us. So. So, so you mentioned the two, but it's kind of like a three prong. It's the business and the church and like kind of meets e-harmony. Yeah. Yeah, basically with yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's matchmaking. A, there's a process that goes in there, and then you know what? Uh, this isn't a, a judgmental statement, but one thing that I think is just true in the church world is, it's really dicey to tell people you might be looking around. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you might get fired. You might lose credibility with your people. You might hurt families that you know you have sewn into your ministry. Sure. And so we'll get calls pretty often from really special people that are like, I am not putting my resume out there. I do not want to be one of 200, but I will trust you to determine whether I'm one of the last three, four, five. Got it, yeah, okay. And so it, it, it's, a, it's a very humbling place to be. You hear a lot of uh, uh, very cool stories that just don't get shared very often. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know both of you could speak to this now. Within that, what are some things you look for when matching up staff with churches, in the churches and in the staff? Yeah, I mean, some of it just has to do with capacity of someone to handle the responsibilities of the role. And that's why, if it's William or me, in a search situation, we'll go in and do a lot of homework on the front end to understand both the church and the responsibilities, trying to determine up front what does success look like for that role so that when we start to talk to candidates, uh, we are not only able to figure out do they have the capacity, but the other, the other big thing is just DNA. Do they buy into the overall vision? Do they embrace the values and so on of that ministry? Because there are lots of great churches, but there are also lots of different flavors of churches yeah. out there all accomplishing the same mission, but they just look different. And a great leader over here may not be the best fit for this church over here. And so that's why there's lots of conversation on the front end and the back end to make sure a good fit's taking place. Yeah, I would, I would say that uh the other piece that happens is uh, like church hiring is just not I, I did it as the pastor for a while it's just not done well it's like bad dating mm -hmm. like the guy you know waxes his car all day and lifts weights right before he picks her up and you know it's all <laughs> like he doesn't look you know Good and, the, and the girl doesn't eat for four days and you know gets her hair yeah. just right and you know it's kind of like the story of Jacob marrying the wrong woman and waking up and like that's not what I thought I was marrying. <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, it, it, it happens. So I think what we can bring, and both candidates and churches, our clients, yeah. really appreciate just kind of a sober, objective view of, hey, here's what's great about this person. Here are some particular reasons why Jesus had to die for them. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and everybody's got them. You know, honest, it's, it's, yeah. you know, just some, some sobriety to the whole thing sure. that, that hopefully gives people a better sense of what are we really getting into. And what, what I've found is, churches, good candidates don't mind going to churches with problems as long as the church can name those problems. Yeah. They try and hide them, put makeup on them, that's a problem. Yeah. That, right, so, you know, yeah. trying to give that objective view, I mean, you go to the, there are those standard, uh, you look for their character, you look for their competency and the chemistry, those sort of three C's, but cool. there's a, a long process to making that match happen and a whole lot of face-to-face uh, -face time. Right. Um, so. Now, nitty gritty on this stuff, what's the success rate? for matchups that you guys make? I mean, if we speak Nobody's to quit this week, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it, so far, so good. Yeah. I mean, uh, we keep getting hired by people who've already hired us. We, uh, one of the more flattering things that's happening is candidates, like one of the lead places that we have referrals for business is a candidate who interviewed for a job and didn't get the job. Mm but they tell their friends, hey, they treated me right. Wow. Hey, the process works. I didn't get the job, but you need to hire them to do your... So, you know, hopefully we're, we're able to serve the kingdom and, and uh, help people. I, I, I've told a lot of people we met with today, this is probably bad theology, and the Lord will have a word with me sooner or later, but I love uh, the church. I love pastors more. 
and they just get the crap beaten out of them all day. Uh-huh. So whether it's my client who's a pastor or candidates, I just want to serve them and help them and yeah. it's, uh, uh, take time with them. So, Love it. Yeah. Now, your, new, your newest book, Killing, yes. Killing Cockroaches, Yes. Um, it deals with how leaders can get bogged down in micromanaging and little things, ultimately losing focus on what they should be leading. Right. Uh, um, how do you break that cycle? of getting bogged down in just all the micromanaging and, yeah. and details that need to be taken care of and focus on the, the important things. Well, I think it, it begins with clear vision, big vision, mm-hmm. um, and never giving handing that, that aspect of ministry over to somebody else. Uh, but this conversation about building the right team, I think is critical because uh, who, the vision ultimately is going to be accomplished faster, have greater impact if you can empower more people to embrace that and to carry, carry that ball for you. And that's why this, this concept of building, building the team with the right people in the right roles is so critical. So uh, and that, that's a huge thing. The other thing, you know, my wife and I went to London a few months ago uh, for the first time, first time in Europe. And uh, if you have visited London, you've heard of the tube. The tube is their subway system. And you go down there, and one of the messages that you hear anytime you're on the tube is you've got to mind the gap. And uh, in the subway system, they're talking about the gap between the train and the platform. Uh, in church world, I think we need to mind the gap as well. And the gap for us is the gap between the vision that's here, yeah. the execution, people that are real, they're ready to accomplish the vision, but there's this gap in between of systems and strategies that, that churches rarely give attention to. And so you have all these people here, they've bought into the vision, they're ready to go accomplish it, they're just not sure what they're supposed to do. And so when, when you also do the hard work of clarifying your systems and strategies, you make it easier to empower people and you allow people to focus on the vision of accomplishing the vision rather than responding to all of the urgent things that come at us in ministry and in life. Got it. So getting those people mobilized, getting them activated. Mm-hmm. So they're ready to run, but they, are right. not, they haven't been equipped or set into a system that gives well you know what what i think what ends up happening is when we don't give attention to what what the systems and strategies need to look like to accomplish vision uh we end up just doing church we just end up doing what we've always done or doing whatever the loudest squeak is exactly and and so in the you know what what grieves my heart is we have we have pastors that are working hard praying hard, they want to do the right thing, mm. uh, but they just haven't had the, the time to step back and have some counsel and have some encouragement on what, what they may need to do to make that effort and that prayer and those next steps may be more effective to accomplish the vision that, that God has given them. Got it. Killing cockroaches? I have uh, 74 copies. <laughs> <laughs> Read it every night and keep it under my pillow. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting on the next one. Yeah, love yeah, it. It's good. It's good. Um, okay, lastly, kind of like a bigger question. Where do you see leadership for churches going in the next 5, 10, 20 years? And specifically, what um, types of personalities do you think are most needed? Or maybe, you know, in addition, critical right now? And what types of positions maybe are even emerging that didn't exist before? What a good question. A good question. That's great. You know, one thing that I see, regardless of the positions... Some of this is a result of the economy, right? But uh, some of it's just good thinking. Is I'm seeing smart churches spend more money on fewer people. So they're paying better salaries mm. to a smaller team. Mm. And what we consistently get asked to find is, don't find me a children's ministry director. Find me a leader of leaders that I can plug into the children's ministry. Yeah. I can teach them the children's ministry piece. Yeah. Give me a leader of leaders. And when you can get, uh, as one of my clients said, William, I need a coach and coaches don't touch the ball. Mm. So, you know, you want to find people that are able to equip the saints for ministry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like almost a biblical idea. And that trend is emerging very quickly. And another one that I see is kind of back to your original question about communication. Uh, In the corporate sector, the fastest growing C-suite or corporate exec suite job is uh, not a CEO or COO, 
uh, but a chief communications officer yeah. that sort of runs all the branding, all the communication. What do we do with the social media? What do we do with, you know, yeah. everything's changing and moving faster. Smart churches are figuring that out, and they're actually getting a pastor on staff that just deals with that and has some pastoral acumen. So, I mean, it's one thing to hire someone from your middle school group who knows how to work Twitter and Facebook, but, yep. but it's a whole other deal to actually get somebody with a shepherd's heart and some some skill for for working in a church. Wow. Um, you know, who knows what, I, I, I turn it over to Tony, but the one, who knows what we need in 20 years from now. I wouldn't have known 20 years ago anything about what's needed now. Sure. So more than like trying to see the future, uh, I tell clients all the time, I look for a gift that I think ought to be listed as a spiritual gift, um, the gift of agility, mm. right? So no one can see the future, but really great leaders in churches can anticipate what's about to happen and also be able to respond quicker than everybody else. So that's, yeah, good. Uh, agility would be the big thing I'd be looking for and uh, someone who can lead leaders. Oh, yeah, yeah you talked about finding the leaders, and it's interesting. You know, I go into churches, and part of what I'll do uh, with some of the churches I'm working with is kind of a health assessment of where you are right now. And it's less about what happens on Sundays, because I think churches, for the most part, have figured out how to do services. A lot of times where they need help, though, is looking at what happens Monday through Saturday, and how do you help people to take next steps. And so a few months ago, I, I go into this church in Virginia, and one of the things I notice is they're only paying, or their, their staffing budget, it's only 35% of their total budget. Mm. It's the lowest level I'd seen in any of the churches I worked with. Wow. On the other hand, the number of adults volunteering was close to 70%, which was the highest I had ever seen. And I think there's a reason why. I mean, because they have decided to uh, hold staffing down and hire leaders of leaders, the end result is they have more people serving in ministry, which wow. is right. it's not only helping to accomplish more ministry. I don't know about you, as far as me and my spiritual journey, when I've taken steps in ministry to serve other people, that's where I've also taken significant steps in my faith journey. Yeah. Mm. I just think it's it's part of the discipleship process. And when we when we feel like we have to staff to do all the ministry, we're denying people the opportunity to take steps toward Christ. Yeah, that's huge. He makes things simple, you know. Right. He's <laughs> good at that. He's really gifted. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, guys, thanks so much. Now, lastly, uh, just to kind of wrap things up. You're your networkers, so you're ever, everywhere. Mm. You're all over, uh, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Quora and Daily Booth and uh, Instagram. And uh, I tried Quora for about 24 hours. Yeah, and I couldn't figure it out, and I kept on getting email messages. So I decided that was enough of that. Yeah. I Do was, you use Quora? No, I was. Um, was I that was a kind joke? Of, it was a joke. <laughs> I was trying to list as many like social media platforms. Simple. Yeah. Simple. <laughs> I was yeah, I was trying to get as many out there as I can. But of course you are a few places, websites, Twitters, you what, left what, what out do you got? LinkedIn, but Yeah. <laughs> LinkedIn, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah, it's easy, just Vanderblum and just you spell it just like it sounds. So no. Uh, <laughs> nice thing about the name is if you misspell it in Google, it will still pop up. So yeah, uh, anyway, right. I think it's uh, W Vanderblum. It's Twitter.com W Vanderblum. Uh, it's Facebook slash Vanderblum. Easier way to do it is to go to our website. And some people were having trouble spelling that, so we just did uh, findourleader.com. Love so that. Okay. Findourleader.com, and I think there are links there for all of our Twitter and Facebook Probably. and blog and all that stuff, but yeah. he's got an easier deal than I do. So Yeah, mine is TonyMorganLive.com mm -hmm. because some other Tony Morgan was faster giving me the domain name than me. But he's not live. He's not live. He must be He boring. might even be dead yes. by now. He might. Well, <laughs> he still owns the domain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he would probably charge you to if some day. That That's right, probably. But... Okay, cool. You know, and it's funny, we always ask people this as well, but it's always down in the description on ours as well, links and everything, so you can always check that out. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much. Sure. And, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, love to be out here. Love what you guys are doing. Uh, you know, the Pacific Northwest is a place that needs good churches, and to see what you're doing to help them is real encouragement. And uh, appreciate y'all having the sun for us. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Think International, thinking now for tomorrow. 
and uh, we'll see you later.